Okay, everyone, so with the Marvels coming out just one, two months from now in November the 10th, I figured before I talk about that movie, I feel like it needs to talk about one more person involved with the three Marvel team girls. And it's high time we talk about Kamala. is Epitaxis Joshua here once again giving you guys finally my MCU TV series review of Miss Marvel. With the Marvels coming out, I figure it would be the appropriate time to talk about Miss Marvel. I'm going to do the same thing with Captain America 4 next. Let's talk about Kamala. This is a TV show created by Bisha K. Ali and is directed by the two directors of Bad Boys 3. This stars Iman Vellani, Yasmin Fletcher, Matt Lenz, Led Nucky, and Aramis Knights, and a bunch of other actors. And this is set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is the seventh show for Disney Plus to be produced, and this is going to serve as a little bit of a prequel to Kamala before the Marvels. A 16 year old girl named Kamala Khan and she has a bright imagination and she is a big fan with imagination. She's a superhero fan particularly when it comes to Captain Marvel. Kamala feels like she doesn't fit in the school and sometimes even at home. That is until she gets superpowers that the hero she's locked up to and now she has to use these powers for good and to know what to do with them. You saw my first impressions of the show last year you know I quite enjoyed the show and I'm sorry that it has taken me until now to review the show but I wanted to wait until we got to a certain movie to actually talk about it and so with that being said I am obviously I am a fan of Captain Marvel of course the movie I still am and when it comes to Miss Marvel and when I heard about the show I got a little nervous about this show, honestly, because I feel like this was just going to go the teenager route, and it was going to be the thing that was going to kill Kamala Khan in live action. But then I warmed up to it when I saw trailers, and when I saw the posters, and then when I saw the casting that they get, which we'll get to, and I ended up quite growing on this. And so I watched all six episodes last year. And now having seen the entire show in this entirety, Miss Marvel is one of the better MCU Disney Plus shows. I do like it more than Moon Knight. I do prefer it more than Hawkeye. And I definitely do prefer this more over Secret Invasion. I know some people have said this is one of the worst things to happen in MCU. I had people say this is one of the worst things ever. But it's not completely terrible. I do think this is an actual... Well, fun show that has some heart into it this has our issues i do have with the show and i'm going to talk about my issues but first i want to talk about the praises i give this show for starters i have to say the casting choice of kamala khan i think this is a very smart casting choice you have iman Vellani playing the role of kamala and miss marvel and this is an actress who has not done any acting before so this was her first big break and this is a big deal for her she is a fan of the character and she wanted to play the character and they of all different actresses they could have gone with they settled with Iman Vellani and they casted her in the role of Kamala. I think she's very good in this as Kamala. She's likable and she you you feel for her. You feel that she's not being understood by her family, not being understood by her friends. She she nails the tone, she nails the likability, and she knows the personality of Kamala. And even outside of playing the character in the interviews, Kamal Iman just seems a very passionate about the character she's very likable and she's very charming she has a white 16 year old girl and the actress herself she is way older than that she's 21 but i feel like her performance was actually really good as kamala khan i thought she brought a lot of heart and a lot of energy into it 
as well. And I think she was actually really solid in this. The rest of the cast here, I also thought the rest of the performances in this were actually really good in this. You have some other great performances with her too. You have Matt Lentz as Br Bruno Corelli, which I like him, he's very likable. He is a friend of Kamala, but he also has a little bit of a liking to her. So, and she's also a tech genius who has a crush on Kamala and is very loyal to her. And there is a nice dynamic between them. And he sounds pretty much like Tom Holland. I'm sorry, you could listen to him and listen to Tom Holland's American Spider-Man voice. And you could tell me that they don't sound much alike. I thought that he was great and he had some very fun moments and I thought he really stole the show and I want to see more of him going forward outside the MCU and such. I've seen him in stuff like the Cinderella story, Once Upon a Song, and he had a little cameo in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 and the Piranha 3 Double D, and he was also in Pixels, but acting wise now, I want to see him do more stuff in this. Yasmin Fletcher as Nakia was very good. You also have Sinoba Sheriff and Mohan Kapoor as Muniba and Yusuf Khan. They both were very good in this. You also have Sagar Shaikh as the older brother. I also thought Laura Marsden as Zoe Zimmer was also very good. And a few in here I didn't think was all that great here, but I overall thought this cast was really solid here. And I also enjoyed the different changes of the title cards with each episode. It's very fun, it's very entertaining to watch the title card of the show switch different uh, creative ways like they did with Invincible and Invincible Adam and Eve. I thought that that was actually very good here and with the character development of Kamala, you get the home life, you get the superhero life, you get her life outside school, and I found Kamala to be a very interesting character. She's very lovable, very easy to root for, and she's not an asshole in this. I will also say from a direction standpoint, here I think that ba Bali and Fada, the two directors of Bad Boys for Life, they did a great job directing this. I am heartbroken that they never got to see their Batgirl movie get to see the live day, but I will give them credit here and say that they did a great job here. And if they do season two, I want to see their energy come back. I like the sense of energy that gives Kamala, like Spider-Verse, like feel of some of what Kamala's thinking, what she's drawing about, and her being obsessed with superheroes, because that's the thing that us nerds were all obsessed with sometimes, superheroes, Star Wars, all of that stuff, and it's very present here, and I definitely do enjoy that part of it. I will say all of the episodes here were good for the most part. There were some I liked more than others. I loved the first two episodes. I loved episode three. It's really episodes four and five where it kind of neanders a little bit, especially with the fifth episode. It kind of slows down the pace a little bit and some things feel a little rushed and some things feels a little bit incomplete. Which is why I feel like there's going to be a season 2 and they're, they're probably going to hold it off until the, after the Marvels comes out to see if they'll do a season 2 or not. But I really thought season 3 episode 6 paced everything back into balance very well for an engaging show for his six episodes. I do have my issues with that statement here, but I will say overall each of the episodes were very good here. I also think the music wise and the cinematography wise and editing wise, this is a very well shot and a very well lit show. It is very well paced. There's a lot of colors, a lot of brightness. You get to feel the Pakistani culture and the representation. And I definitely love the representation of that culture here, Indian Muslim culture here. Because we live in an era here where representation does matter. Sometimes you can do it the wrong way, but when you execute it right and you do it wholly, some you can get great results like this and this is no exception and i think that for the most part does tie into this very well and i really liked the execution of the representation here i also love the character the rest of the characters in here as well 
again, some I like more than others. There are some funny moments with the parents. There are some heartfelt moments here. There's even some funny moments with Kamala. There is one moment in particular that I that is has stood out that was very funny to me, where Kamala's going home and she's basically listening, dancing to music. That was actually pretty funny. Pop that all off, I think the action that you do get is great. The effects work is good for the most part. It's not $169 million, but the visual style is really good here, and I like the action scenes here for the what little you get. They do go to some different locations to a party and such, but that's that's the thing when it comes to MCU. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to put some other stuff in there to make some of your things work. But it was never boring. It was fast paced, and it felt more like what I would want to watch out of an MCU show. As much as I didn't hate Secret Invasion, it needed a little bit more action and a little bit more stuff going on. I like the political intrigue and stuff in that, and I did like the darker tone. Which is good because not everything needs to be lighthearted, but you needed more action when it comes to that show. This needed a little bit more action as well, but this is Kamala's origin story. So the origin does make up for that in spades. Before I go into the issues, I will have to say when it gets to the final episode of this first season or miniseries, I definitely really loved a returning cameo that sets the Marvels into motion. You have the return of one of my favorite MCU characters, controversially, I don't care, fuck cancel culture, fuck incels. The shit's chess, it ain't checkers. Boy Larson as Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. Definitely. Absolutely. I, I think it's signed, sealed, and delivered, honey. Yeah. Kamala, at the end of this episode, she puts on this bracelet, which me, having seen the trails for the Marvels, knows what this bracelet does, and is basically causing her and Carol, as well as Monica Rambeau, to switch their powers, which I've seen that in the trailers. And you see that Kamala is obsessed with Carol Danvers. And I loved Brie Larson's reaction to it, and I loved her performance in this one episode. I personally feel like Brie Larson's getting better and better as she is going along. And luckily, some of that unjustified Brie Larson hate has gone way down. There's still some people who don't like her as Captain Marvel, but we'll give it to the Marvels to see if she could make a full turnaround on a lot of people. Now going into the issues of this show, I really thought that the villain character in this, played by Mazuit Mahari Hayat through here, she wasn't really all that great. I thought the villain here wasn't really memorable. I feel like you need more of a memorable villain in terms of what's going on here. And the villain here is just kind of there. Marvel villains, this is the thing with them. You're gonna get a great villain sometimes, you're gonna get a mediocre villain, sometimes you'll get a bad villain in the case of some people like Grandmaster and Malekith. But with the great, great villains, she could have been one of the better great villains if they wrote some dialogue, wrote it better. And with the main uh, villain guy here, I feel like they were just there, honestly. There are some moments where the show does drag a, b a bit, so I do feel like it could have sped up some of his pacing or just cut a few things or just speed some things up for time. A better way to use editing rather than just cutting a character out, cutting an important moment out because Editing with things, I know some people bitch about long movies, but here's the thing when it comes to the editing. You can't just cut out, just cut hours of a movie out or chunks of a movie out without knowing what's important and what's not important. You can speed things up, you can cut things out, but 
you have to know good editing. You don't need everything to be fucking studio interfered. This needed at least two more episodes because you needed two more episodes of this and three more episodes. This needs to be at least eight to ten episodes longer than it is because the six episode treatment just doesn't do a few subplots or any favors. I'm not going to go into spoiler territory when it comes to it, but I feel like you could definitely could have used a little bit more of that extra runtime here when it comes to a few more things in the in the show we needed a little bit more episodes to breathe and fully flesh this out hopefully with season two we can expand from six episodes to eight episodes because you do need a bit more episodes but overall i found miss marvel to be a very charming enlightening and endearing mcu show with a likable character in a, a likable performance in Iman Vellani. She's great here. I can't wait to see more of her, especially as Kamala or outside the MCU. I thought the supporting cast was great. I liked the dynamic with Kamala and Bruno, which I hope they get to become a thing in the future. Okay, please. I also think the action, what little we get is good. I love the visual style. I like the like to change the pace and i think this is a show that some people just kind of hate it when it comes to its release there is a change they do make from the comics by making kamala a mutant but that personally doesn't really bother me i i am fine with it as long as it doesn't feel out of hand and i think this show deserves a lot more appreciation but the question is, should you watch this show before the Marvels? If you are someone like me who's really pumped about it, I would say watch those three things. If you are just want to watch the movie without having to watch the show, just watch the Marvels, Marvels and give Kamala a chance. Because Kamala is here to stay. She's part of the future Avengers that are younger. And whether you people like it or not, Kamala is going to play a big part into the MCU. Same with America Chavez, same with Kate Bishop. Who knows? Potentially Miles Morales if you do him right. It's not the best show in the world, but I it definitely has its issues in terms of villain and some episode pacing stuff. But I thought the show worked for me and for what I got. So at the end of the day, if I have to give this a grade, Thinking about it long and hard, because of the villain and because we needed some extra episodes, I'm going to give this a better than Vampire Diaries. This is a fun show, and I definitely have the poster. I will hold on to it. Kamala, her interest is made, her stance is made, and I look forward to a season two. But with that being out of the way, I can get highly pumped for the Marvels. Well, that's going to do it for the video that you just watched. If you want to see more, my channel icon is up here. If you want to see more content from me, all my social medias are right here in this end card. I will also leave a playlist and a video here for you to see what the channel is about. As always, acknowledge me, stay epitastic, join the epitastinists, and you guys keep it cool. Well, that's going to do it for the video that you just watched. If you want to see more, my channel icon is up here. If you want to see more content from me, all my social medias are right here in this end card. I will also leave a playlist and a video here for you to see what the channel is about. As always, acknowledge me, stay epitastic, join the epitastinists, and you guys keep it cool.